Lord and just come together with believers and worship the Lord and tell him how good he is. And that old song that we were singing at the end, I remember since just a teenager singing that song. But you know what? We need the breath of God breathing on us 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And when the breath of God is breathing up on us, we know we're close and we know he's close. And I want to keep him close all the time. You say, well, he lives in you, he's close. Well, I know he lives in me, but some people don't keep him close in their thinking. They, they, they don't allow him to, uh, to, to uh, continually just, you know, take over their thoughts and their minds. And, you know, Tuesday night, Pastor Al and I were doing a special broadcast on, webcast on, on thanks. And uh, I had him, he read a scripture, and I had him read that scripture probably four or five more times after he read it. And it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, let your prayer, let your requests be made known to God. But um, there is another, the reason I'm reading that again, because I challenged everybody that was watching, let's not be critical of anything or anybody between now and the first of the year. You know, it takes 21 days to change habits. So what, the, one of the things that I didn't say was when we get into the new year, we'll already not be criticizing and finding fault and, and saying things about people. So... Uh, you know, we'll go into 2019 uh, with a good heart and good thoughts, thinking good things. And then in the chapter, uh, two chapters prior to that, in chapter 2, verse 14, it said, do all things without murmuring and complaining. And so uh, I just feel like that if we can keep this thought here in uh, our experienced life family, uh, God will help you to have a better day when you don't complain and you don't murmur. You know, some people that can find, you know, you can tell them, boy, it's a beautiful day. Yeah, but it'll probably rain tomorrow. Yeah. You know, they're always going to come up with something negative to say. But I like to just even know something is not the way it needs to be. I need to be, I, I like to say, well, let's find our way through this. Let's not get stuck in what's going on here. Can I hear an amen? amen? I'd like to welcome our viewing audience, wherever you're viewing from. Thank you for tuning in today and you that will watch this later. God bless you and I just pray that uh, um, this will be a time that God will just really minister to you and open your heart. And uh, I want to say to those that's watching us on Fire TV, my goodness, we didn't realize how many people were watching us on Fire TV till we got a, a, a report. Now, it didn't tell me who you are, didn't tell me where you are, but it told me how many people are viewing. And uh, you on Fire TV, thank you for viewing. And, you know, just tell others about our webcast and about our ministry and what we're doing. And if you're watching local, and uh, you don't have a home church, you know, right here is one. Now, we don't have room for a lot of people, and we're not trying to grow a big church. So if you want a small environment, and you want a place where people know each other, love each other, help each other, encourage each other, get to know each other, I want to invite you to Experience Life Church right here in Carrollton, Texas, 4125 Fairway Drive, and we're in an office complex, and we got a really nice place here where we can just worship the Lord and have an awesome time. So if you're in the area, stop by and, and uh, come and visit. Because once again, we're not trying to grow a mega church. Our mega church is in the internet. Thousands watch us every week and we're grateful for all the people that watch us wherever they are. But we're grateful for you right here in the chapel this morning. Give yourself and Jesus a big hallelujah. Come on, let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on, let's make a loud noise to the Lord. Oh, you can do better than that. Yeah, come on. Whoa, wow. Well, we've had a wonderful few days. Our son, Tim, and his lovely wife, Jackie, and uh, our grandchildren came in. And uh, since Wednesday, they got in Wednesday evening, and I don't think we've stopped eating. 
I don't think we've stopped eating since they got here. And uh, I think I'm going to have to go on a three-day fast just to uh, get back to normal. Uh, we've just had so much stuff. But we've had a better time being together than uh, we did just eating food. But we did have a wonderful time, and it's good for them to be here. And my son's going to be coming and speaking in just a moment. But before we do, uh, I want Caitlin and Chris to come up here just a minute. Would you come up here just a minute? Um, you know, Caitlin and Chris, you know, they, this is our, 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 my grandson and granddaughter. Come over on this side, baby. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the Tim's children. And, um, you know, four years ago they left to move to Knoxville, Tennessee for Tim to marry that beautiful lady sitting over on the front, which we will acknowledge her in a little bit and her lovely son, awesome son, oh, wonderful son, uh, uh, Luke. Uh, anyway, I'll get them all up here together today, but uh, uh, they've quite grown, and Miss Caitlin has become uh, a, a lady now. You know, when she left, you know, it was four years ago when she left, but she's quite changed a little bit, uh, quite a bit, and uh, become more beautiful. And we're so proud of our, our grandchildren. And, of course, Chris, you can remember when Chris left, he, he looked about like Caitlin's size uh, when he left, but I don't know what happened to him. Uh, I... I <laughs> I don't know, where did all of this come from? Y'all remember how small he was and skinny he was? And now, and now uh, you know, uh, it, just, it just keeps, he just grew up and then just got wider and bigger everywhere. And one reason is, you know, you have a meal, and after you have a meal, and two hours later, he's having another meal just as big as he did the boom before. And then about 10 o'clock at night, he comes down and decides he wants another meal. So uh, I think I can understand a little why, why all of this is here. The height, I don't know. But anyway, it's so good to have them both here. And um, we love them very much and miss them. But they got a great life over in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we're so glad for them. So give our grandchildren, Caitlin and Chris, a great big hallelujah. All right, you can go be seated now unless y'all want to preach. <laughs> this morning it gives me great pleasure and joy to introduce our speaker today. You know, um, when you have your family that's Christians, that is probably the greatest thing and the compliment that you can have. You know, money money does a lot of things, and money will buy you a lot of things. But you know, when you're all Christians and you love God and you can pray together, pray for each other, um, it just makes it a whole lot better. And our son Tim, we're, we're, we're more proud of him than probably he will ever know. Uh, just for the fact that he is obeying God and serving God because to me, serving God is more important than gifts or, or, or abilities and, and what people do. But God has anointed him. He just got back from the Philippines from the trip in the Philippines just doing some great ministry over there and um, working with several different things which we're going to be connecting with real soon. And... Um, I often say this about Tim, I wouldn't have been able to do even what we're doing this morning by internet if it had not been for Tim, because Tim went before me in many, many countries of the world. I don't even know how many, and he would go in in places where we had never been, where no one had ever probably heard my name, and he would organize a conference, and we would have thousands and thousands and thousands of people attending, thousands being born again, and now many of those people are going on. And he was just there meeting with some of the pastors uh, uh, that our life and ministry has touched. And he sometimes would have to travel three or four times to the, the countries before I would arrive or, or the team would arrive. And uh, that's not what I'm the greatest proud of him about. I mean, you know, I'm just wanting to make sure that uh, you know you can't do nothing alone. It takes, it takes help to do what you do. And so his help going and 
going and, and sometimes setting up meetings was not easy to do because just going in and finding the people to work with you and then putting all of the teams together that it took. And sometimes in some places it would take 500 ushers just to, uh, just 500 ushers alone just for the meeting. And he had to train all of these people, get all of this done. But most of all in these conferences and places around the world, he became a great preacher, preaching to all of these people in many nations of the world. He's had the privilege to preach and minister. And one of the things that I admire about him most of all, he's never ashamed of Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you what, you never know where he is when you're out on a, on a if you're out eating or you're out shopping. You never know where he is. He's gone and he's found in somebody he can witness to about the Lord Jesus Christ. I know Friday night we were over in Fort Worth and we were at a restaurant there and all at once we looked around and Tim was gone. Several times we looked around and Tim was gone. But Tim had someone cornered telling them about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't care if he's in a Home Depot line, Sam's line, or, or anywhere he is. He's going to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so since they're here and, and you know, they're leaving just as soon as service is over. They're not, they're not staying for lunch. They're going to stop at fast food and, and head on back to Knoxville. We were hoping they'd stay over and, and um, have a Mexican meal because we hadn't had one. I know Chris loves a particular restaurant here. Uh, but anyway, they're going to be heading right on. So rather than take any more time, let me introduce our son to you, Tim Clowers. Give Jesus a big thanksgiving for... Because without him, uh, things would not be possible. You know, um, I'm, I'm just so thankful for my love for Jesus that I'm able to do what I can do and have been able to do over the years. Um, you know, when I was serving under my dad's ministry in that capacity, uh, I'm just very thankful. Um, it was a, a, great, a great time, and it's still continuing. And... I'm, I'm thankful now in, in this, you know, different season of my life that, you know, my wife and I, Jackie, we've been able to travel to four nations together. Um, most recent, you know, was India that when we, when we went there back in May. And it was, it was amazing to see what we saw and what we were able to experience together. Um, we are um, all together. We are seven, soon to be eight in our family, I'm, I'm thankful for ever, every child in our family. Um, you know, Chris and Caitlin are, are amazing kids. So is Luke, the, the young man sitting over here, <laughs> and my wife. Uh, I, I don't know that I could be who I am currently without the grace that he's given me and an amazing wife and my wife, Jackie. So I'm very thankful uh, for her. Um, and she is awesome. So was that concrete last night. That's pretty close to the awe of God. <laughs> um, so before I, I talk about, you know, what, what the Lord put in my heart, I, I think I want to just pray for a minute, if that's okay with everybody. And I just wanted to welcome everybody that's on the, the internet viewing um, and everyone here in the, the chapel this morning. I'm so thankful for this privilege to speak into your life this morning. It's a privilege. It's an opportunity to speak the very words of God, uh, of what he wants me to communicate to you this morning. So, Father God, I just thank you so much for the privilege. I thank you for the opportunity to share the gospel. Lord, I am nothing without you. And with you, I am everything, as, as well as everyone here. And, Father, help me to communicate what you want me to communicate this morning. Lord, let me be your vessel. Let me be your vessel. I just want to be an instrument to play the right tune that people will hear the right sound to cause them to make a decision for you, Jesus, or make a change of direction in their life. Holy Spirit, I just pray that I, I say what you want me to say. I don't speak out of my intellect or my 
my, my gain knowledge from this earth, but Lord, I speak what's in my heart. I thank you, Father. And I just worship you this morning. Jesus, I love you, I acknowledge you, and Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence this morning. And Father God, I thank you for touching lives this morning via the internet and also here in the chapel. I thank you, Father, I praise you. Lord, there is absolutely none like you. I just worship you, Father. I worship you, Father. I worship you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Um, so, I, I, it's, I don't know that I can get out everything that's in here. I will try. Um, you know, there was a song that I, I listened to for the first time a little over a month ago, and it, it talks about move. You know, when you move, um, you know, things happen. You know, when you, when you act things happen. Um, you know, living, when we live our life in, with Christ, we live our life with purpose. Um, you know, how, how fulfilling would it be if you know that you were living a life that you know that you were created to live? You know, I think it's more often we, we question things throughout our life. Our, the things that we go through, the things that we experience. And, and what happens is we, we try to rationalize our thinking. Come on, somebody. We try to rationalize our thinking instead of when the negative thoughts come, we, we rationalize our thinking and continuing to go through the negative thoughts of where they will take us instead of doing what the Bible tells us to take every thought captive. You know, it's hard for us to walk in the Spirit sometimes because we live in a natural world. Come on, somebody. So that, that song, it just it brought me to tears. You know, it, it, just, it just brought me to tears and... I've never been moved to that level because of what it talks about. It says when you move, you know, it, when you move, things begin to happen. When you move, things begin to happen. And so, and I looked up that word move this morning. I'd never done it. it, it and it means to pass from one place or position to another, uh, to move one, from one residence to another. So, you know, like when you move houses or from one apartment to another or from a house to another house or from a condo to a house, etc. You know, you take all of your things that represent who you are and you move them. It takes effort. You have to get up and you have to do something. You have to act upon what, you, what you're doing, right? In, in, in other words, you can say what moving is, it's, it's an advancement. It's making progress. And then, then I looked at the word move in a couple different scriptures in the New Testament and defining that in the Greek, it, it talks about departing, and it, and it talks about um, you change your place, you, you make progress. So it's like in the, in the Greek and then also in the English dictionary, they're very similar. And so I, I just rehearsed those lyrics. Um, I, I've been rehearsing those lyrics over the last month of this particular song. It's through one of the artists of Jesus culture. Um, I don't know if even know the guy's name, but... He's just really anointed, and, you know, he just sings this part of the, the lyrics. It's, you know, when you move and out the outcast, find a family. And, I, and I, just, I was just moved by that because when you moved, when you move the outcast of our society, what people look down upon, they find a family. And when you move the, the orphan, it's like and part of the lyrics is when you move, the orphan finds a home. You know, when, when you move, when you do, when you put things into action, you know, your fear can turn into praise. Come on, somebody. You know, when we're in a state of, of moving, it's when we, when we move, when we, when we put things into action, that, that fear begins to get behind you. It no longer controls you. You know, it's... And I guess people are mystified sometimes 
about this world. We live in a, a carnal world, but we are a spirit. We are a spirit being, and we are to live by the spirit. And I guess we, what we don't realize sometimes as humans is Satan is the god of this world. I mean, it's, it's just pure, plain, and simple by the tragedies, the difficulties, the challenges, the natural disasters. God doesn't do that. You know, the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave, right? So the very nature of God, it talks about in John 3, 16, he is a giver. The very nature of God. So because of the love of God, what he did, the love of the Father gave his Son, the only begotten Son that he had. So the love of God caused him to give. Come on, somebody. And so knowing the natural disasters and all the difficult things that go around us every day because we live in a carnal world, we live in a world that Satan tries to control his best, but sometimes God intervenes. When we get close enough to God, he can intervene on our behalf for, for the sake of humanity. Come on, somebody. I just think about how, really sometimes, how he's rescued me out of things and done things for me and my family. I do think about the awesomeness of God. And if you can reflect back on your life, if you've been serving God for five minutes or five years or 50 years, you can reflect back on and, how, and realize how awesome and amazing that God is and how awesome he has done and performed many miraculous things in your life. Come on, somebody. So, so this is where I think when we recognize if we can just begin to move. Move, we can move from faith or move, move our fear from fear and move it into faith. But sometimes in our world that we live in, so you know, it's, we're, we're moved by the emotions of what we encounter on a day-to-day basis. And we're moved by feelings. So many Christians in our world today, they are ruled by their feelings or their emotions. Their, their emotions dictate how they feel instead of doing what the Bible tells us. It take every thought captive. You know, when you're not feeling well, you just have to get up and move. When your emotions have overwhelmed you, when you're, when you're, you're, you're overpowered by the emotion of a situation, a circumstance, then what we need to do is we need to move. We need to take those thoughts captive and turn them into an action. You know, that's probably the, the biggest thing that me and my wife, we, we really try to do is when we're, f- I guess you could say in the we, when, we, when we have these moments of over, when we're overcome with, I don't know, the anxieties and pressures of the world, we try to move and do things for people. Because, and I think about that, those lyrics of the song says, when you move, the outcast find a family. When you move, the orphan finds a home. So when you move and when you do things in faith, things happen for people. Things begin to change. Come on, somebody. But all it takes is us actually moving. It just takes us actually moving. We have to do something about it. So, um, Psalms 25, verses 4 and 5. Um, I, I want to read that scripture to you. I feel like I'm in the old days, but and I feel like Sometimes when I see my dad up here preaching, it's like I'm getting more towards the old and he's getting more towards the modern. Because I got written notes and a big old Bible. He's got an iPad and an iPhone. (laughs) He's all technical advanced and I got handwritten notes and a big old Bible. (laughs) You ever notice that about him? He's all technical and he's all cool. Like for his age, man, he's more technological advanced than I am sometimes I feel like. (laughs) No, that was David. <laughs> Just like when I was young, he got me started on some things I shouldn't. Sorry, Dave. I love you, bro. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, Psalms 25, verses 4 and 5, it says, Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. I turned 50 this year, y'all. Hold on just a minute. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. So 
when I look at that particular passage of scripture, it's a prayer by David. He, he's praying a prayer to God and and he's praying for guidance. I think sometimes when we, get, when we get in the emotions of our circumstances and situations, we begin to pray those emergency prayers and we, we want answers. Uh, and it's, 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 I don't know if there's a thing it's wrong to have an answer from God, but when we, when we come to God, when we come to him in prayer with the right heart, we, we seek him for guidance and he will lead us. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I, I think I'm done with asking answers from God because I've matured in my faith and, and I'm not so concerned about getting an answer from him. Whereas I want to be guided by the, the Lord Jesus Christ in every circumstance in my life. And, and I, I think it's all captivated the Christian life. I've, I think I've said this now for a few months. If you, if you really rehearse 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, 17, and 18... I, if we could parallel our lives to what that, those three particular scriptures say, the Christian life can become a little bit easier. And really do it, rehearse it, and live it. You know, it says to be joyful always. Because being joyful always is not easy. You have to choose joy. It's not something you just wake up. Now, there are some people on this earth that can be happy when they wake up. But generally speaking, for the most part, even they go through the valleys of life. The world begins to beat them up and, and, and whoop them from behind sometimes when they're not expecting it. And not choosing joy is what gets you down. So um, the Bible tells us in verse 16, you have to be joyful always. You know, if we think about that passage of Scripture you can't be joyful always. And I, I paraphrase the word can't, C-A-N apostrophe T. You can, but it's hard. Because that word can't derives from the word can. All things are possible. You can do it. Uh, we can do anything that we put our mind to. Come on, somebody. So be joyful. You have to choose joy in the midst of your difficult circumstances. And it says to, to, to pray without ceasing. And I think you've been taught well, if, you, if you've never heard of that verse on the internet, it says to pray without ceasing. Well, I don't know that you could do 24 hours of prayer, and I think it's, it's very evident, evident that he's not talking about you pray 24 hours a day. It's the attitude of prayer. It's, it's when you get a moment, you can acknowledge God. When you're in, you know, you're on an eight hour shift, a 10 hour shift, you could take a moment. You don't have to walk up to the, to the, to the, um, you know, the, the desk where you are when there's two or three people behind or beside you in the cubicle. Or if there's a, a coworker, you're, you guys are driving in a, uh, on a delivery or something. You don't have to burst out and be all weird and religious. You can go in your quiet moments or under your breath. Lord, I just acknowledge you. Thank you, Father, that you're with me. You care about my delivery that I'm on today. You're with me. You're, bring, you're helping me to bring joy to people that don't have joy. Right? And then it goes on in verse um, 18. It says, um, in all things, give thanks. I mean, there's a, there's a real simple pattern there. You have to choose joy. You have to choose it. And number two, you have to have the attitude of prayer. And number three... You have to be thankful. I mean, if it's, a, if it's a $5 bonus or a $50 bonus or a $500 bonus, you have to be thankful. So me and my wife, what we do uh, in ministry and also the business that we run, it's just amazing to see how many people aren't thankful. I mean, it's, it is shocking to see how many people don't understand and recognize thankfulness. You have to choose joy in life, and you really have to make it a purpose to be thankful. I mean, if you look all through the epistles, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Timothy, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, all those, he talks about thankfulness all the time. Thankfulness, thankfulness, thankfulness. I mean, it's, it's inherent to what, what these guys are saying to us about thankfulness. All right, now I got off of the the topic of what I was trying to communicate this morning. Um, you know, the Word of God is, is our guide. It is, 
it points us in the right direction. It helps us to live that kind of life that he wants us to live to be able to be fruitful and productive for God. Come on, somebody. And so, you know, wisdom is what comes from the word. The more that we read it, the more that we ponder upon it, the more that we study it, the more that we can pray the way that David prayed in this particular passage of what we um, what, what I just read to you in Psalms 25, because it says David was the man after God's own heart. Because he, he prayed with the attitude of, Lord, I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me in life. He wasn't demanding God for an answer. Come on, somebody. You know, wisdom, I think, is what comes from the Word. When we, when we continually read the Word of God, we gain the wisdom of God and in life, we, we push college on, on people when it's not fit for everybody. Now, I do uh, 100% say that an education is a very important factor in this modern life that we live. It's, it's paramount, in fact. I think you know, knowledge from, the, from a university or the right school is paramount to our success in life. But it's, it's not the only thing that's going to get you through the other side. You know, having... Having a, a BA in communications or um, one of these amazing degrees that, that are, requires a lot of intelligence won't, uh, won't give you the, the, the wisdom and the spirit of God on the inside of you to, to be able to minister to somebody that's in a, a sick and a dying place in their life. Wisdom is what comes from the word of God. You know, Hebrews chapter 11, um, it, it talks about faith. You know, we, we read about uh, Moses' parents. I think they, they acted on what they knew was right, that they, they needed to hide their baby because they knew the hand of God was upon their baby. You know, we, we, that was a great act of faith, and I think sometimes that gets overlooked because... You know, that baby could have been killed and they, uh, because they hid it, and then they could have been hid. They could have been killed because they, they disobeyed the king. And then I, I think about, you know, Moses, how he led the children of Israel through the Red Sea. I mean, the, he moved. He, he, he did something. He acted. Um, you know, and then the Israeli people, that they, they marched around Jericho. What they did was they moved. They had to do something. And then, you know, we can read on and on about stories in the Old Testament and New Testament, how these great men and women of God, what they did was they moved. And that's what I'm trying to, I guess I'm trying to get it out this morning. I don't know that it's coming out like, like butter melting in a, in a hot dish in the microwave, but it, it's, it's we've got to move. We've, we've got to do something. And when we move, I think uh, that fear begins to dissipate that, that is in the back of our minds. It's, we don't want to go through the rejection because we're afraid of it. There's, there's a fear. And, and I, I guess my... I, you know, what I'm trying to communicate is to you that it's hard to, to move sometimes when, we're, when we've been in a place so long that... We're, we're not able to. It's not comfortable to us. And sometimes we need to get out the sandpaper and rub it a little bit. And it'll, if we realize what sandpaper does, it smooths the surface out so that you can put something pretty on it. Okay, so 1 John chapter 5. I plan to read you a lot more, but it's just... Um, I think I want to read something else. First John chapter 5, verse 13. If you have your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, please move over there in your digital device. Or if you are old school, a little bit like me, and you have an actual Bible with pages, you can turn to it. Can I get a big gospel amen in the house this morning? Okay. Um, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, I have written 
this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. So God's talking about a promise to you. He's telling you you have uh, the, the, the promise of eternal life. And then in verse 14, he says, And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. So notice here, we are confident that he hears us when we ask for anything that pleases him. So notice he didn't say something that doesn't please him when we ask him. And then he goes on in verse 15, he says, And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. So the emphasis here is on God's will and not our will in this particular passage of Scripture. So so if, if we are acting and we are moving on the will of God, which is to do the work of the ministry, which is what the pastor's design and function is, is to teach you and equip you to do the work of the ministry when you ask for something to do His will, which is when you pray, you align your will with God's will, He will give you the desires of your heart because it equips you to do the will of the Father, which is your will. Let me put it in layman's terms. Let me just put it out there on a street just like this. So that you see the yellow line, you can cross the yellow line. If it's the white line, you can't cross the white line. So we pray all the time, Lord, give me this. Lord, bless me to be able to do that. The Bible tells us in in the book of Matthew chapter 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God above all else. And he says, but he, he... He paraphrases it right there. And live righteously. And then all these things will be added. You know, the, the amazing gifts, the, the, the new Corvette, or the, the nice leather coat that you've been wanting. Ooh, or the $100,000 year job that you've been wanting. There it is. Oh, I, I think sometimes as... As we understand the word of God, we we can focus too much sometimes on the things that are added. When in reality, when we pray the prayer from a heartfelt prayer with the right uh, attitude of prayer, when we align our will with his will, then those things are nothing but a byproduct of you seeking God. Come on, it says to seek ye first the kingdom, which is his kingdom. What is his kingdom? It's about expanding the kingdom to get people, as many people as possible, into the kingdom of God as possible. Come on, somebody. So, um, you boys come up here for just a minute. Stand beside me real quick. So, you guys have heard you've, and seen a lot of crusades um, Over the years, mass crusades, and I'm thankful for all of those great things that Billy Graham did, uh, Reinhard Bonnke that they've done over the years. Um, um, I'm just focusing on what you and me can do because we are not big crusade evangelists. We are men and women of God that can make an impact on our earth. Uh, on this earth, um, I, I could talk to you about witnessing and you know getting people saved, and I can go to this big dude. It might be a little hard, but we could we could headlock him into just like he's even a little bit bigger. I could head right, look, look, give me see <laughs> he won't give it to me. So you see what I'm saying? I can headlock as many people as I come in contact with to saying the prayer. Are you saved? Yeah. Are you saved? Yes. See, go on down. See, they didn't question me. What I did was I headlocked them into saying a prayer. You're saved. Say that prayer. Amen. Go on. Be as you were. Now, they were big, but what did I do? I headlocked them into a prayer. And that's where I think I'm trying to get all of this out to to get us to move and put ourselves into action that we, we don't need to worry about trying to headlock people into prayers. We need, to, we need to do our best to be led by the Spirit of God so that He can give us the right words to say when we're talking to people to get them into a relationship with Jesus. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and it begins in verse 7, it says... Uh, It talks about the seven gifts of the Spirit. Let me just flip over there real quick. My iPad doesn't work as quick as y'all's. 
That was a bad joke. Verse 7 says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives... Oh, wait. This translation is a little bit different. To one pastor, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another preacher, the same Spirit gives a message of knowledge, special knowledge. The same Spirit gives another man of God, a preacher, great faith. To another... Oh, wait. Is that what your translation says? That's what mine says. I'm just kidding. It, it doesn't really say that. But I think sometimes that's where um, we get stuck in the carnality of our mind. That's for the men and women of God, of, of faith, and, and the leaders in our Christian faith, that these gifts are to operate through them. But you know what? The Bible tells me right here, a, spe- a spiritual gift is given to each of us. There's nine of them. I don't know that you'll get, get all of them. But God, it says here in the latter part of this passage, He is the one who decides who gets what gifts. He decides what you get. So, over the years, you've probably heard my father talk about Smith Wigglesworth, Charles Finney, Howard Carter, we've even seen some modern day operation and, and Pastor Benny Hinn of some of these amazing gifts. Uh, I've even seen the gift of healing move through him sometimes uh, here in America and on the mission field. I mean, those are amazing to see how God moves and how he's moved through these great men. And you've even read these books uh, about these great men and women of God, but and, and I was just being quiet and just talking to God and just reading the word one day. This is about six months ago. And I was like, God, why, why were they permitted to do things that were so amazing? Why were they permitted? And then God just broke it down for me real simple. Just real simple. Because they know me. They know me. Um. So what's permitting us from doing what they did? I mean, you can be on your job and the gift of healing can operate in you. I mean, what permits us from doing that? I mean, it's a question. What permits you from operating in the gift of healing when you're on your job? What does that? I think it's our mindset, it's our thinking, what we've known, what we've heard. It's the, the, the emotions, our feelings are so fickle in this world that we live in today because of the pressures of life. They build upon us and they, 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 they take a hold of our mind and our thinking to, to, know that we, to think, help us to think that we can't do what they did. I mean, there's no reason that you can't be having coffee with one of your friends or your co-workers or one of your family members come into town. You guys are eating dinner, and the word of wisdom, can't, it could come right there. Hey, you know what? What, what is, I, you know, there's something going on with your shoulder right there. I mean, I, mean, I, just, I just know that there's, you've been dealing with the pain right there. It's been, you've been dealing with that for months. Um, can I pray for you? Or, you know, when you're with one of your best friends and, you know, you didn't know it and there's been a tragedy that's happened and you, you knew something's going on because, you know, there's a, either maybe it's a word of knowledge that God gave you. It's like somebody died in your family and I'm sorry, I need to pray for you right now that God will help you to, to, to be able to deal with those emotions. I know it's hard, but let, let me pray for you. Or, let, you know what, <laughs> let me just bless you with something. Here's a, here's a $50 gift card. Just buy your food for the next two days or whatever. I mean, we can operate in a capacity that we don't really know at a level that we're not familiar with, but we can. Because of the gifts of the Spirit, they're alive, they're available, they're here for us. Um, But how do they don't come? Because, you know, Jesus talked to his disciples about when they went out to to heal, you know, the, the... the, they couldn't cast out the demons and heal the lepers. And Jesus said to them, it only comes by prayer and fasting. Well, he wasn't referencing them that they need to just fast and pray before they move. I think it's reflecting back upon what, um, what the Apostle Paul talks about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 
It's, it's being joyful, having the attitude of prayer, being thankful. And those are the prerequisites for understanding who God is. You know, John 3.16, it says it's God so loved this world that he gave. You know, the very nature of God is giving. And so if the very nature of God is giving, why wouldn't we want to give back to him as much as possible a relationship to get to know him? I mean, every morning, I... I, I just want to be with Jesus. I mean, I would love not to have to go into the business sometimes. But you know what? If I, if I stayed in prayer all day and just read and worshipped, I don't know that I would be effective for the kingdom of God. But I'm armed and I'm ready because there's people all around and about us that we can touch with the, with the message of the Jesus Christ. All right, and I'm way off. Um, I'm so sorry. You know, the world that we live in is getting darker and darker by the day. Even though we see a lot of lights and it's getting brighter by brighter at night. But the world we live in is getting darker and darker. And we have to be the people that shine in the middle of the darkness. What permits us from shining in the darkness? Come on, somebody. What permits us from shining in the darkness? I mean, there's just natural disasters that are happening left and right. They're not acts of God. You know, like the Exxon Valdez spill back in the 88 or 89, whenever that was, they said it was an act of God. And you see it in your contracts um, of your businesses that you work in. You know, we can do this. um, And they put in there in those clauses, acts of God. And they're not acts of God. Come on, somebody. An act of God is seeing the gift of healing moving through you. That's an act of God. A word of knowledge coming to you from your, about your coworker is an act of God. Amen. I mean, why can't we do those things? I'm just, I'm just so hungry to see the gifts of the Spirit move in people. But what permits the gifts of the Spirit from moving in people on this day and age that we live in? What permits us from seeing those things? I think if we can get rid of those fickle feelings and whenever those negative thoughts come to us, we just got to take them captive. I mean, my goodness. I mean, just we've got to stop. You can get mad at your cousin Vicky because Vicky didn't do what you expected or Vicky didn't give you what you wanted because, oh, oh my goodness, what about cousin Vicky? What, but what about Eddie, my coworker? He didn't do what I, we thought he was going to do. Oh, my goodness, he's one of the worst boss ever, so I'm going to go complain about him. I mean, on and on and on about life that we can have these fickle feelings that will cause us to get into fear and remove us from the capability to operate in faith the the way that God designed us to operate. I mean, and I think what that does to us is it puts us in emergency tongues, you know, because we, we don't have what we wanted or we didn't get what we needed. Therefore, we come to God wanting needs or, or with our needs or with answers instead of going back to that relational part of God. Seek ye first, because if you're about the Father's business, then he's going to have the attitude, which is the very nature of God towards you. He's going to give because you're about his business. You know, as I said in First John's chapter, or as what the Bible tells us in First John chapter 5 and verse 14, he will give you Everything that pleases him. He wants to give you everything. He does. He wants you to, um, if, if it's a nice car that you desire, he'll give you that nice car. But sometimes I think it's our thinking that permits us from getting that nice car or the house or, or what we desire. But if, we, if we're too focused on all these things being added, then we're not going to really obtain those things. We could probably do it by the wrong means or the wrong way, but I think it's about seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added. And when we, when we operate in capacity that the world sees us with our fickle feelings or our lame emotions, or they see you a different person that you are at work as you are at church, then what does that say about who you are as a Christian? I mean, I, I am the same person 
as when I wake up, I know I freak out my boys sometimes because I'm up in the mornings and I'm praying and reading and they're because they have friends stay over and they're like that may freak them out a little bit. But it doesn't matter if we drive by uh, an area of town to where you know it's homeless. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to minister to the homeless people, or if it's you know, a friend that just lost her mom in a tragic accident. I mean, I'm, I'm the same. Or, you know, the Bible is truth. You know, I think the world thinks that the Bible is not always exclusive. The Bible is truth. And I think we all can understand and believe the Bible is truth. So if we believe the Bible is truth, that means we can act on what the Bible says. The Bible says to compel them to come. You know, in our evangelism, we, we need to compel people to come, but you can't headlock them because that does you no good. You can force them to say a prayer, and you can force them to get in here. You can bribe them with a, I'll give you 20 bucks if you come. I mean, that's great and all, but really, it's demonstrating the power of God and you living a life. They could, if, let me say it like this, and I think I said that to you earlier in the year. How would they know what Christ looks like unless they see him walk by? I mean, this world that we live in, like I said earlier, it's getting darker and darker and darker. What they want to see is they, this world is hungry to see what, what Christ looks like. They're hungry to see what Christ acts like. And they are hungry to see what Christ talks like. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us in, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15, Jesus was the visible image of an invisible God. So if that's what the world back in those days had to look forward to, that Jesus was a visible representation of his Father, and if we we are Christians, we are Christ-like, that means we are an image of Jesus Christ, because the Bible says that he created us to be the image and likeness of him. So if we are the image and likeness of him, that means we are to be Christ-like. And therefore, we can be the visible image of our Lord and Savior to this world. But if we're acting up like little crybabies, not getting our way, we didn't get that raise or we didn't get that promotion, we, didn't, we weren't treated right at work or our Aunt Sally disrespected me at the dinner table, then what are we acting like? Are we acting like the world? Are we, are we a visible representation of the Lord Jesus Christ that, that the world sees as, ooh, <laughs> I don't know who that is, but I want what they have and I want to be what they are. I'm just telling you, if, you're, if your feelings are fickle and you're not the same way that you are in church, that you are at work or with your family, I mean, you need to change. If the, if the shoe fits, keep it on. If the shoe doesn't fit, then kick it off. That may be harsh, but it's the truth because the Bible is truth. I don't know about you, but when I'm out and about at a restaurant or at my, the business that we run or on the mission field or in everyday life, I am not always led by the Spirit of God. I'm telling you, I am not led by the Spirit. But the truth tells us to move. It tells us to act on what we know and what we heard. You don't always have to be led by the Spirit of God. You can see a broken, dying world. You can see representations of brokenness all around you. As soon as you walk out these doors and go to a restaurant or to your work, uh, any business, you can see the lostness of the world. And you don't have to be led by the Spirit to move and act on something. You just see a need and you feel it because God wants me to see, God wants me to recognize that need because he gave me eyes to see and ears to hear to know and be able to act upon what I know is the truth, which is the Bible, which is truth. It's the fundamental essence of Christianity. He's going to use this to change the world in and around us, church. Come on. I know this ain't one of those preaching, shouting, Pentecostal messages that says, oh, and me and my stuff, praise Jesus, it's coming. It's tough to swallow. Maybe I need some keyboard. Would you mind? Maybe it'll go down a little smoother. It maybe, maybe it'll go down like a smoothie or something. You know, Jeremiah chapter 29. Let, let me just read that. Jeremiah 29.
fixing to grab Al's water right here. <laughs> Sorry. Jeremiah 29, and let's read in verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a, a to give you a future and a hope. And in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you. Gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. So we've read that scripture probably for years. If you've been a Christian for five months or 50 years, oh, you just, you just revel in that scripture and know that, oh, for I know the thoughts and the plans that I had for you. They're good for hope. I mean, you, you read that scripture with just, you're surrounded by the love of God when you read that scripture because it's just, it just sounds like God wants to do great things. But what I want to remind you of is Jeremiah was writing a letter to the elders, the priests, the prophets, and the people who had been exiled by King Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> they had been exiled from their land by the king living in exile. And he's trying to give them hope. But see, we as Christians, we know the hope that God gave us. And there's a sick and dying world around us. Just walk out of these doors. There's people dying and going to hell every single day. It's getting harder and harder. And the world's getting darker and darker, like I said. But we have to be that bright light. And, and what people see is a distant hope. I mean, all they need to do is see Jesus walk by them. I mean, they just need to see a Savior walk by. They're not going to see Jesus, literally. I mean, they won't. I'm just, they need to see Jesus. And you're the closest they have to being able to see Jesus. I mean, I know you're human. You, you, we go through things. But man, put that stuff behind you quickly and choose the joy of the Lord. Because He is your strength. And, you know, live a life of prayer. You know, Charles Finney and Smith Wigglesworth, those two men, they knew God at a level that I don't think you and I will ever see. But I, I'm telling you, I'm determined to know God at a level that He walks with me. I'm determined. Not that I'm going to push myself on somebody or God, but I just want to be with Him. I want to be with him as much as possible. And, and I can't always sit at home for two and three hours. I got to go do what, what I need to do on my daily work. Or on the mission, I have to do things. I have to move. But it doesn't mean that in your moving that you can't minister to people. Um, so let me just give you just a couple quick testimonies and, and I will wrap this up. Um, I have a journal um, that I uh, that I write in often because I don't want to forget things and people. Um, I'm at Sam's Club very often, and that really is my mission field, Sam's. It really is um, Food City, another grocery store. Uh, not to mention, we you know we try to go out and at least once a month, sometimes twice a month, we. We, we'll feed about 150 to, I don't know, 160 at a time. We'll just go down and feed them. Um, and I'm currently discipling one person. There's another person that's agreed to let me disciple them too. And my, we have a class, a grief and recovery class that we're, that we're teaching together. And I don't know that I've met a more giving person in my entire life than my wife. Um, she will bless people that she doesn't even know and they'll remember it and they will, they will be blessed by her acts of service. That I'm Really, when I married her, I was humbled by her acts of service. I mean, really, she, she's like a Mary and a Martha combined, the, the strengths together. 
and um, I'm humbled by her generosity. It far exceeds my mindset of what I knew generosity was, and it's not always a, a big financial gift, but um, my goodness, um, it overwhelms me sometimes of what she will do, her thoughts of kindness, her acts, her willing to move and touch people that she doesn't even know, but, but, but her being led by the Spirit to move, which she doesn't always maybe even recognize that she's being led by the Spirit, she just moves. Because she knows what the Bible says, it's truth. So she just acts on what she already knows is truth. We don't have to be led by the Spirit when we see someone out on the street or in a restaurant. Was the Lord leading me to talk to them? You don't have to headlock them into a prayer. The Bible says, it's real clear, somebody wa- somebody plants a seed, somebody waters the seed, and somebody harvests the seed. I'll tell you, this year, there's only been, like on my one-on-one, I've only won two people to the Lord this year. You may think, that's it? What? I mean, really, that's, that's, I think that's it, one-on-one. But I, I can't tell you how many people I've been able to minister to. And if you read the life and story of Jesus, his ministry, he rarely, I, I don't know of, but maybe one time, I'm trying to re- remember all the scriptures and the gospels. There's only one person that he ministered salvation to first. I'm trying to remember. But what he did was he ministered healing to everybody first. And then he talked about salvation. So can you imagine the magnitude if you operate in the gifts of the Spirit on your job? If you get a word of knowledge and, and you... Or you don't even have to have a word of knowledge. For example, I, I forgot where I was going. So I was at... I go into Sam's Club three, four, five, six times a week. And uh, I was in this produce area going in there and I just saw this guy he's and he's got this this limp you know he he moves like this every morning every morning I see him you know when he's unloading produce Um, so I mean this has been going on for a month so I mean I just decided you know what why have I not moved on this guy before I just walked over to him and I said sir you don't know me but I'm sure you may recognize my face because I'm in here all the time but I see you and I just tell me what's wrong with your leg the Lord you know, put on my heart to come over here and pray for you. So I asked him, you know, is the things, something wrong with his hip. I forgot what, exactly what it was. And something was wrong with his knee. I prayed for him. I walked away. So then very next day, I'm back in Sam's. And then I'm walking, you know, back towards the produce section. I'm, I'm rolling with my buggy. And um, I see him. And he looks up and he notices me. And he's got a big smile. And he walks towards me. But you know what the funny thing is? He was walking towards me. I said, hey, brother. I don't see a limp. What's going on? Oh, man. God did some great things. My knee doesn't hurt. Neither does my hip. See, when you operate in a capacity to see the needs of humanity without even being led by the Spirit of God. He, you give God something to work with. You see what I'm saying? Now I can minister salvation to Him. That is the ministry of Jesus. If you read the Gospel, He did, He, he performed healings. He performed miracles. Then He ministered salvation. And the reason I put an emphasis on that so much is because, I mean, time and time and time and time again, We have ministered to needs of people without even trying to get them to say the prayer of salvation. And then they come back and they want more. They're hungry. They're in tears at the restaurant. I mean, just the other night, I mean, I had a, there's a young man that was our server at a restaurant. He was at a crossroad in his life. And I just said, you know what? Here's an extra $10. Not knowing my wife already tipped him really big. And I said, I don't know what you're going through and I don't know what your life's like. I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you. And he paid a price for you. I don't know why I keep looking at you, Al. I've looked at you the entire service. What you've been believing for, for years and years and years, 
It's regarding a family member. It's God's got it. I don't know what that means, but he's got it. He's got it. It's in his hands. You just trust him. It'll come to pass. He's got this. He's got it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I just thank you for your word. I'm so thankful for this privilege. I may not have spoken with with the entire clarity that maybe you wanted to hear, but I spoke what was in my heart. You know, the Bible tells us when we are weak, He is strong. Life is hard sometimes, but it doesn't have to be. He just wants all of you because we serve a jealous God. He doesn't want to give you up to the enemy to, to succumb to the pressures of this, of this world and this life that we live. He just loves you. And He just wants you to share the love that He gave you. You know, before you were even born again, before you loved him, he loved you. Do you realize that? He loved you. He loved you. And he loves everybody outside these doors. He loves them. He just wants you to be a witness to him. You know, I know it's hard for somebody because you you just, you don't want to be rejected. You don't want to feel that way sometimes when you get rejected. But you know what? Just open your mouth and watch God fill it. I mean, I know I'm probably the, not the norm, and I'll talk to a tree. I can get a tree saved probably. Or I can get a tree in a right relationship with a smaller oak tree that's young. Build a relationship with the tree so it can grow up and become big like you. But you don't have to be me to be who God's called you to be. You know, I know it's, it's easy for me to talk to a stranger. I know I embarrass my boys a lot. But I don't care. I don't. Because there's a dying world out there that needs to see Jesus that you have on the inside of you. All right, I better stop there. Um, um, but before I do... Somebody's left hip is in pain this morning. Is that anybody here in the, in the chapel or somebody on the internet? Okay, stand up. Somebody's left hip. Is it just one person or two? Your left hip? What about somebody's uh, toe or the, somebody, your a toe or your toes? Anybody this morning? Stand to your feet, please. And if this is for you with the, the internet audience, I want you to stand up too because the Lord spoke to me when I was in prayer this morning. God's going to heal you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for performing miracles and healings in your people all over this earth. And Lord, specifically what you told me to pray for. Lord, I command the healing power to flow right now in Jesus' name through these pains, through the pain in their hips, through the pain in their toes. I command your healing power to flow right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you perform the work that I cannot perform in my carnal nature, but by the Spirit of God, you can speak through me and heal their bodies in the name of Jesus. All right, whoever standing next to them, I want you to touch them. Somebody stand next to him, touch him, and repeat this. I command your healing power to flow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. All right, if you just stand there, just move a little bit or wiggle your toes. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. All right. I'm honored to communicate the gospel to you this morning. Um, I'm thankful. I hope you saw my heart. Um, this big book right here, mine's a little bigger than normal. It's kind of big. Realize and recognize this is meant for your heart, not your head. God loves you. Thank you.
I pray you've been touched this morning. I'm going to have Pastor Al and Linda to sing this song here in just a moment, but just hearing Tim talk about learning to move in the right direction and representing Jesus in that move. And I've said here many times lately, the only Jesus the world will see is the Jesus in you. So are you manifesting that Jesus through your life? And that's what he was talking about today. And uh, Tim, you're one over in Romania. Um, she says, this, this was, is definitely for me. Somebody, we, I know who what Ioana is. She's a Romanian lady that has helped us in our ministries over there. She just happened to be watching this morning in Roma from Moldova and other places. People are watching. and So realize when we're here in this chapel, the anointing originates here. Tim prays, Pastor Al prays, Pastor Jan, myself, when we're going to minister, but we're not just talking to the people in the internet. We're talking to you. And if you're a guest here this morning, we want you to know God's, we, we want you back. We want you to come and enter into the presence of God. And move into a greater relationship with the Lord. Amen. And I feel like doing something. I, I want your family to come up here. Tim, Jackie, and all of you. I want you to come up here a minute. Um, when Tim was speaking, the Lord just really led me. And I want you to pray with us. I want you all to come up here and stand behind me. Um, I know Jackie's got her traveling clothes on and didn't too much want to come up here, but uh, um, that's okay. We understand you're going to be getting in the car. But while they were, Tim was speaking, you know, they have a business and they have a ministry. And the business is very consuming. It's a very good business, very profitable business, but it's very consuming very hard work takes away family time this is Luke awesome young man um, loves cars loves loves doing things and uh, Luke will be graduating this year but I want us to pray I had a long conversation with them last night about their future and their ministry I want us to pray first of all for their safety back to Knoxville. Because they're going to be driving through and it's about a 13 hour drive. They got to, they're going to be driving back 13 or 14 hours driving back. They lose an hour because they'll be driving into Eastern time. But after having this long conversation with them last night, <clears throat> I know the anointing that's on their life. And then Jackie has a daughter that's just finished UT. She's going to be a, a physician's assistant. And another awesome young man who's in the Army. He's stationed in Alaska right now. So they are a blended family. They're a blended family. And by the grace of God, they've made it work. They've made it work by being putting Jesus first in their life. And they do spend time with the Lord. They do pray. I am not Tim and Tim is not me. And Tim has not felt led to come here and be my successor as yet. I mean, he has not felt led to come here and be my successor. And um, 
but I cry for their ministry because they do it. And I think the Lord gave me a revelation while he was preaching this morning that I'm going to share with them later. And sometimes, and I'm not saying this about him, but sometimes people think ministry's pulpit. But I think what he shared this morning was you can operate in any one of those nine gifts of the Spirit as the Spirit wills. God doesn't necessarily give you that gift. He, he lets you use that gift for the moment as the Spirit wills. And sometimes, as he said, he's in Sam's and then Jackie was sharing with me about a businessman that she had never talked to. How long you have known this man? Six years. And he's not a Christian, and just just give me a few words of what you how you started out with it. I, th- I think I just uh, lived with him, seeing my life for six years in business, and I felt like God God gave me a. It was recently, maybe a year, six months ago, that it was like it's time. It's time to talk to him. I'd live long enough in front of him to be valued with what I say about Jesus, you know, because he wasn't someone I think that you could just, oh, Jesus loves you. He needed to see it in someone. And so I just felt like, you know, I was able to, to share the gospel. How did you start? With him, just that I needed to talk to some, we have like quarterly meetings and I just wanted to tell him something personal. I said, could I talk to you? And I said that God has not let me sleep because if you died and went to hell and I hadn't told you, Maybe I'm the only person in your life that could tell you about Jesus. And if I didn't do it and he died and went to hell, that's on my shoulders. And I take that seriously. You know, that's overwhelming sometimes when you look around the people that you love. And if you don't take that time to tell them about Jesus and about his love for them. And it is, that's what Tim has taught me. It's their great love that Jesus has for them. It's not rules and it's not regulations. And you don't have to start paying your tithes to me next week and send me on a missions trip. It's Jesus loves you. And I think it's just been a great opportunity to... You know, I hope, I believe I'm going to lead him to the Lord and that I get to do that. But, you know, if I don't, you got to watch my life and watch Tim's life and see us be faithful and just to show him. Well, I think you just recently had another conversation with him. Yes, a second time. Um, I just, I've never hugged this man ever. And I just felt like God said, give him a hug. Just give him a hug. And I just gave him a side hug. And I said, you know, hey, I've missed you. Because I was like, are you avoiding me? And a uh, you know, and, and he hasn't been. And, and uh, we just, I don't know, I just got to share more about just God's goodness. And God loves him. And I just believe, I believe it's going to happen. And who she's talking about is a businessman, a wealthy man, that she's known and lived the life front of, in front of for six years. See, you can, you can witness about Jesus with your mouth. But if you don't witness with your life, you avoid everything you say with your mouth. And so, I want us to pray and believe God that His will is going to be established. I know He gave them this business. But I know where their hearts are in ministry. And I want them to be able to be defined in the next step that they take. You know, as I said, Tim just went to the Philippines and he and I and Jackie and Pastor Sharon will be going back there uh, in a few months. And, And they just come back from India not long ago doing some things in India. But I want us to pray that God directs their steps and supplies the needs at the same time and then you can have more family time and don't have to work as hard. God wants them to work smarter, not harder. And so, first of all, Tim, thanks for speaking this morning and sharing your heart. Um, I got it. And uh, I got what you were talking about. And... 
I want us to believe that they got safety going back to Knoxville, but when they get back to Knoxville, there's a peace that comes on them that they have not had about some situations and decisions that they need to make. Tim said something to me last night that I don't know where he learned what he learned from. But he, he said some things to me last night that I know ministers that's been in the ministry 50 years. And I'm not saying it's because my son. It has nothing to do with who. Which is the very same thing. What he said was, was talking about what I talk to you about all the time is we can't do this out of emotion. We've got to do it because it's the right thing to do. And how many times do we do things because it's, we're, we're all emotional at the moment and so we do it because it's emotion. As he began to talk to me about that, <laughs> and Jackie said, she said, well, I can't do it without emotion. I said, well, you've got to learn to do it without emotion. Somebody said, well, I can't separate the two. Yes, you can. It's a process of learning how to separate the motion from we're emotional beings, but there's times we make decisions not on what somebody does or doesn't. We make decisions on what's right. And that's what we were talking about. So I want you to stretch your hand towards them and you and the internet, uh, you, and, you and the internet that's watching uh, uh, and you, you wanna uh, and Roma over in you, you, you wanna in um, um, Romania bless you. We appreciate you so much and all you do. But I want you to pray with us too, you wanna and all Pastor, the different ones. Before you pray, just to confirm what uh, Tim and Jack you're talking about today, probably 30 years ago, the Holy Spirit spoke into my heart and said, "There's gonna come a day." when ministry will not be personality, but ministry will be the body of Christ individually. It's like Tim was, was preaching today. See, when you and I, as members of the body of Christ, not behind the pulpit like Pastor said this morning, like Tim said, but out in the world, I mean, when he said we are the salt and we are the light, uh, we're not that in here unless we're that to each other and we shouldn't need to be that to each other but when we're out in, in society when we're out in the world where their business what Tim was saying is when he's in Sam's Club he's probably buying product for his business and that's where his mission field is and so they're really doing what the Holy Spirit made real to me over 30 years ago. Because you know, Pastor Don, you and I grew up, and, and you yourself, you were a personality, traveled all over the world. And God used you tremendously. And he's used a lot of people. You mentioned several today, Benny Hinn, Joyce Meyer. We know a lot of people that, that God has used nationally and internationally. But the, the thing that's going to bring Jesus back is when he releases his body individual believers all over the world and so when you're in the marketplace when you're in the restaurant when you're in the dry cleaners when you're in the drugstore wherever you are that's when you become sensitized and the holy spirit speaks to you and he uses you but we've been closed mouthed you know we're, we're saving it till we get inside the four walls and the safety of our four walls and 40 people and that's not what god wants that's not what pleases god he wants us to simply be released. You know, Jesus was the first of many sons. And so we're to be, as Tim said, when we walk by somebody, we should change the atmosphere in that room. Mm. When, when, we, when we, you know, reach somebody who's on the street corner, wherever, we should be able, as Tim said, praying for the man who had a hip problem. Well, that was the body of Christ. He wasn't behind the pulpit, but he was certainly God's hand extended. And that's what my wife's been playing here for the last few minutes. Oh, to be his hand extended, reaching out to the oppressed. Let me touch him. Let me touch Jesus so that others may know and be blessed. Isn't that what you're preaching, Tim? Let me be his hand Amen. extended. I just wanted to say that before you prayed because we can include everybody that's viewing and everybody that's in this room needs to understand you are God's hand extended. You are the presence of God 
everywhere you go. Amen. See, that's confirmation. That's confirmation. I'm just looking here. Laura from Mississippi. She said, true daily life. Yes, everywhere we are, He is. Everywhere He is. And Laura, I went to church with Laura when we were teenagers. We went to the same church. I hadn't seen Laura in years, but she's watching this morning. But we were teenagers. We went to the same church, had the same pastor. When we were 14, 15 years, 16 years of age. We went to the same church. Thank you, Laura, for turning in. And you and Tom, I just believe you and Tom, God's going to bless you and Tom more than ever before. Father, I thank you for our family. And we thank you for Luke and Darby and Reese along with Chris and Caitlin. And Lord, I know the hearts of Tim and Jackie and their intentions and and their desire to really bring life and help to individuals. They love to do the masses, but they know one thing, Jesus, that you ministered to the woman at the well. You minister to the woman at the well and Holy Ghost, I just pray that there is a divine peace as they drive back to Knoxville in safety. Whether Luke is driving or Chris or Tim or whoever is driving, Lord, just give them watchful eyes and keep them awake and keep other people from harming them and hurting them in this 13, 14 hour drive back to Knoxville, Tennessee as soon as the service is over. And Lord, as they get, get back into their routine, that it won't be a routine, that there will be an anointing of the Holy Spirit. There will be an anointing of the Holy Spirit that will give them divine direction every day and as they do the personal ministry and discipling, God, that it will open the door that you have planned for them. As Tim read the scripture this morning in Jeremiah 29 and 11 and explained why that scripture was written and who it was speaking to, Lord, we believe it's speaking to us too. That you have a future that's good for them. And you supernaturally connected these two people together. And I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. And I believe that the rest of their life is going to be the best of their life. I command, I speak, and I declare, and I prophesy over you and Chris and Caitlin and Luke and Darby and Reese that the rest of your lives, Tim, Jackie, the rest of your lives are the best of, the, of your lives. And oh, I'm telling you, somebody in the internet, somebody in the internet, somebody here in this room that's feeling this, that, and you want this anointing on you, just stand on your feet. Just stand on your feet. Somebody in the internet, we got, we got people watching from different parts. Of, somebody that wants this touched. The anointing is so strong here this morning. See, folks, this is what church is all about. This is what church is all about. It's taking time to allow the Spirit to begin to flow. It's not just teaching. It's not just preaching. It's not just singing songs. But it's allowing the Holy Ghost to stop and say, I want to heal you. I want to minister to you. I want to speak to you. I want to take you. I want you to move for me. I want you to move in the right direction. Holy Ghost, somebody, I want you to know something supernatural is happening right now on the internet and in this chapel and with our, our family. Something supernatural is happening. Something supernatural is happening. And Laura, I believe you and Tom over in Mississippi, you know, I, I just believe something supernatural is happening for you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I, I, I just can't stop. I just can't stop. I just can't stop. The anointing is it's greater and greater and greater right now. The Holy Ghost is upon me. And I know somebody somewhere 
whether you're in this room or whether you're somewhere in the world, the Holy Ghost is breaking bondages and destroying yokes. Come on, put your hands together and let's just believe God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that something right now? Joanna said, she's in Romania. She said, I'm praying with you right now. I'm praying with you right now. We got people. See, this is what this is all about. We're creating an army. We're creating a, 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 an experienced life church where people are going to make the rest of their life the best of their life. We're going to turn thousands of lives around, not me personally, but through the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? amen. Father, as I try to bring this to a close, you want to sing? Pastor Al, y'all want to sing that song? Let's just worship. Let's just worship. Let's just worship. Oh, to be His hand extended reaching out Oh, pray. Come on and worship God, everybody. Let me touch Him. Let me touch Jesus. So that others, they may know and be blessed. That others may know and be blessed. Father, I thank You for this service today. For the people that will watch later, let this anointing be so strong. Those that's filled with worry, despair, hurt, pain, loss, loss of a loved one, whatever it may be, let the life of Jesus enter into them now. My sister, my sister Merle that's watching from Tennessee right now, Holy Spirit, just touch her right now. Just touch her. Merle, just put your hands up. Just put your hands up right there in your house and just, just worship with us right now. I know you've probably already been to church and now you're home and you're watching us, but just worship right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 You know, Joy, I, I, I just, you're with the public all the time, and I know you have to be very watchful of what you say and how you say it. But you know, just looking at you, people can see Jesus in you. That's right. You know, Joy, don't have to say a word. Joy doesn't have to say a word. You can just look at Joy. And all at once you want to know, who is this woman? What's, what's, what, man, what's, what's going on with this woman? Because it's the joy. she got the right name, Joy. But, but she's got the life that goes along with it. Amen. Amen. And so folks, something. We're, we're really believing. I, I made some decisions the other day. And, and we're going to stick with these decisions. And we're going to, our, our team, we're going to just stand in here in the gap. And we're believing that everything that Tim preached about this morning, these gifts of the Spirit, they're going to operate in the chapel. They're going to operate in you where you go. And you're going to go out and you're going to minister to people and you're going to bring them back in here in the house of God. And you and the internet, you're going to do the same thing. And then they're going to turn on and start watching us. And then they're going to learn and go out and get somebody else. This thing is just about to break loose. When I say just about, we've already loosed it. We're just now believing God for the finances and everything we need so that we can just, just knock the devil's windows out. That we can just hit him where it hurts with the gospel 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And this ministry, you know, it's not just for people of 50 years and old, older. It's people that's hungry. I look back at Melina back there. I remember before Melina was born. I remember dedicating Melina. And Melina, I tell you, Melina, I want to tell you something, dear. Come here. Come here, Melina. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on up here with me, darling. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tim, I want you to come over and, and Jackie. I want you all just lay hands on Melina. When did you graduate, Melina? Yeah. 20, she graduated high school 2014. She doesn't look like she's old enough to be in high school. And I say that as a compliment, sweetheart. But I dedicated, I dedicated Melina. I dedicated this, this, this young woman. Wow. I know we're way over time, but you know what? I'm tired of apologizing for being over time. I want the Holy Ghost to do what He needs to do. And Melina, I just, I just want Tim and Jackie to lay hands on you and pray for you. And I just believe you've got a future. You are so talented. You are so talented. And you know what, Melina? I don't know how we're going to do it, but somehow we've got to get this talent in you working in this church and on the internet where there are thousands and thousands of people that's being blessed by you. I know you're in the workplace right now. And I don't know how this is going to happen, but, but Al, this, this child... She's not a child. Forgive me, dear. This, this lady, young lady, I, see, I, see, she's still a child to me because I, 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 I remember when Debbie was carrying her in her belly. And, uh, and then I remember when she was born and I dedicated her and, and now see you this morning. I, I, just, I just want God's ta- this, this talent to come out of her. So y'all put your hand on her. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of God that you gave the world. You gave the world Melina. Father God, the same way that you gave me, you gave Jackie and the rest of the people here in this congregation. Melina is a gift, Father God. You gave her to the body of Christ. And Father, I pray that as she seeks you, the more that she pursues you, Father God, the more that you'll begin to reveal yourself through her, through her gifts and through the talents of what you gave her, Father. And I just pray, Lord, that she remains humble, Father, before you always to be able to do what you've called her to do, Father, so that those gifts and those talents can bless people. They can draw people to their knees to meet Jesus Christ, Father. I pray that you expand her thinking, you enlarge her thinking, and you give her the capacity, Lord, to think beyond where she currently is in her her current situation financially, physically, and in her mind, Lord. I just pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, let that anointing rest, rest on her. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we release that anointing, Father God, upon her life to be used by you. Lord, let the gift of God that she is, of who you've created her to be, Father God, I pray that as she draws closer to you, that you reveal to her who you've created her to be and the gift of God that she is, that she can be known by men, Father God, as someone who loves Jesus and to be used by you for the sake of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you, dear. Just stay here for a minute. But you can go to your seat. You can go to your seat. Come here, Caitlin. Caitlin has a beautiful voice. She has a beautiful voice. And you still doing piano? No. I'm going to pray that desire to come back on you, dear. Uh-huh. I want to play guitar. Though. You what? Guitar. You play the guitar? Do you want to? Well, maybe you can play both of them. <laughs> but she has a beautiful voice. And let's just believe God. Father, let Caitlin find her stride. Let Caitlin find her stride and And let her be anointed when she sings and that desire to be so strong on the inside of her to do that. And whichever one of these instruments are the one she should 
be drawn to and would be best at. Put it in her heart. Put it in her heart to find the time and make the time to spend time with that instrument and with you. And you be the real instrument. But that she would find the time either on that keyboard or the guitar, whichever one that really is the one that's going to be the one that she would have be passionate about. And I thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Lord, just help Luke as he graduates this year. And just finish football season, a great football player. But I just pray, Lord, that Luke will find his, his, his avenue, what he's supposed to do. I just pray, Lord, that It'll be productive for you, for him, for people. And he'll know. And a passion will begin to rise in him for whatever it is. That passion will begin to come. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. And Father, I pray for Chris. If, if the Air Force is what he's supposed to do, Lord, let him know and his parents know the Air Force is what it is but Lord whatever it is let him find that passion let Chris find that passion that passion to follow and nothing distract him give him the grace the grace to do it and Lord we just pray over Darby that just got engaged and we just pray Lord that you'll direct her step and Reese in Alaska in the Air Force already. Is the Air Force or Army? Army. Just the situation right now that he is in, just give him wisdom and be with him and give him favor. Give him favor right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Do you, do, have you been blessed here today? Do you feel like you've been in church today? Yes. Well, you know, I want the presence of God to invade this room and the internet so much. Just like my sister, she said, she said, yes, really feel God is touching me right now. See, this is what we want. This, this to be just spread everywhere. Everywhere we go, we want people to be touched of the Lord and be blessed of God. So I want us to, Father, we, we, you know we've just finished our holiday here in the U.S. of Thanksgiving and now the big one is coming for Christmas. Help everyone in this room and those that's watching by internet to make a commit, c confession of faith and commitment. Not to find fault, not to complain. Not to criticize, but Lord, to start giving thanks. When a thought comes in to be complained, to find fault, that they will replace that thought with something to thank you for. And Lord, by the time we get to Christmas, Lord, just bring new people in our chapel. We got room for a few more. Help these to go out and get more and bring them in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Melody. Melody Turner, bless you. Bless you so much. You may be seated, and you guys want to take your seats, you can. We're going to receive our tithe and offerings today. And um, as you give your tithe and offerings, let's just believe that the Lord opens the windows of heaven in areas and ways that you really need. And you in the internet audience right here is the place where you can go to just go to EO, elglobal.com I'm sorry elglobal.church elglobal.church so easy to give online so easy to give and you that do give we are so grateful for you that do 
because it cost us thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet. We need your help to be a part. And then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, use your credit card on the credit on the internet, there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day and don't miss Tuesday night. Dot church. So easy to give online. So easy to give. And you that do give, we are so grateful for you that do. Because it cost us thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet. We need your help to be a part. And then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, use your credit card on the credit on the internet. There's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day, and don't miss Tuesday night. dot church so easy to give online so easy to give and you that do give we are so grateful for you that do because it cost us thousands of dollars thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet we need your help to be a part and then put that up there one more time if you are one of those that do not like to um use your credit card on the credit on the internet there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to and if you do that god will bless you if you've got a church you tithe to your church but if this is your church you tithe to your church here at experience life church well god bless you in the internet we love you you have a great day and don't miss tuesday night dot church so easy to give online so easy to give and you that do give we are so grateful for you that do because it cost us thousands of dollars thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet we need your help to be a part and then put that up there one more time if you are one of those that do not like to um use your credit card on the credit on the internet there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to and if you do that god will bless you if you've got a church you tithe to your church but if this is your church you tithe to your church here at experience life church well god bless you in the internet we love you you have a great day and don't miss tuesday night dot church so easy to give online so easy to give and you that do give we are so grateful for you that do because it cost us thousands of dollars thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet we need your help to be a part and then put that up there one more time if you are one of those that do not like to um use your credit card on the credit on the internet there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to and if you do that god will bless you if you've got a church you tithe to your church but if this is your church you tithe to your church here at experience life church well god bless you in the internet we love you you have a great day and don't miss tuesday night dot church so easy to give online so easy to give and you that do give we are so grateful for you that do because it cost us thousands of dollars thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet we need your help to be a part 
and then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, use your credit card on the credit on the internet, there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day and don't miss Tuesday night. Dot church. So easy to give online. So easy to give. And you that do give, we are so grateful for you that do. Because it cost us thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet. We need your help to be a part. And then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, use your credit card on the credit on the internet, there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day and don't miss Tuesday night. Dot church. So easy to give online. So easy to give. And you that do give, we are so grateful for you that do. Because it cost us thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet. We need your help to be a part. And then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, use your credit card on the credit on the internet, there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day, and don't miss Tuesday night. Dot Church. So easy to give online. So easy to give. And you that do give, we are so grateful for you that do. Because it cost us thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet. We need your help to be a part. And then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, use your credit card on the credit on the internet, there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day, and don't miss Tuesday night. Dot Church. So easy to give online. So easy to give. And you that do give, we are so grateful for you that do. Because it cost us thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet. We need your help to be a part. And then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, use your credit card on the credit on the internet, there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day, and don't miss Tuesday night. Dot Church. So easy to give online. So easy to give. And you that do give, we are so grateful for you that do. Because it cost us thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet. We need your help to be a part. And then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, 
use your credit card on the credit on the internet, there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day and don't miss Tuesday night. Dot church. So easy to give online. So easy to give. And you that do give, we are so grateful for you that do. Because it costs us thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet. We need your help to be a part. And then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, use your credit card on the credit on the internet, there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day and don't miss Tuesday night. Dot church. So easy to give online. So easy to give. And you that do give, we are so grateful for you that do. Because it cost us thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars each month to do what we're doing on the internet. We need your help to be a part. And then put that up there one more time. If you are one of those that do not like to um, use your credit card on the credit on the internet, there's the address where you can mail your tithes and offerings to. And if you do that, God will bless you. If you've got a church, you tithe to your church. But if this is your church, you tithe to your church here at Experience Life Church. Well, God bless you in the internet. We love you. You have a great day, and don't miss Tuesday night.